Welcome back to Weather Center and Nazario, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have a lot of very breaking news to give to you guys in terms of the kind of development possibilities we could see in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico. I did a live stream earlier today to communicate my thoughts, but today we're going to spend some time here in the main segment of Weather Center Nazario digesting everything that I've come to see. First things first, let's get started with Tropical Storm Philippe and newly developed Arena out in the Central Atlantic Basin. These two are going to connect and influence their path ahead, i.e. the Fujiwara effect, which we're all very well versed in after the last couple of days we've been talking about this pretty heavily. Philippe currently has max sustained winds holding strong at 50 miles an hour. He has not weakened or gained any strength in the last 24 hours. He has filled by about 4 millibars since this time yesterday. We were sitting at about 998 when we checked in for an afternoon update. We're up to 1,000 two millibars and newly developed arena is at maximum sustained winds of 40 miles an hour with a central pressure of a thousand five millibars both of them are going to start to slowly go counterclockwise and orbit around one another if you haven't taken the opportunity to watch it yet i uploaded a very brief youtube short discussing the incidentals of what the fujiwara effect or the binary connection that we tend to see with tropical cyclones when they get right up on top of one another like we see with our p and r storms out in the central atlantic very interesting interesting phenomena. I definitely encourage you check that out or do a little homework in the background on what the Fujiwara influence is because it's very neat to see this happening in our Atlantic Basin this year. Very good stuff to observe and watch real time and hopefully take some careful notes for future reference as we go further and further into the future and maybe even the next couple of hurricane seasons for that matter. National Hurricane Center is unfortunately having a rough time with projecting Philippe and now Rena out into the future because of what's expected to happen between these two systems. You can track them forward in time and you can kind of see that what was once a cone has now turned into essentially a circle, a forecast circle. Because these storms are in such close proximity to one another, they're going to try to orbit one another, being so similar in size and strength, albeit before they each slingshot in their own general direction out into the central and north Atlantic for that matter. They should not pose any substantial threat to any immediate landmass to include the Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles, which is something myself and other analysts highlighted yesterday as a potential landfall area. That seems to no longer be the case, we're starting to see a lot more influence between the two cyclones and themselves in a bit of a sphere, if you will, kind of isolating them to leave them to their own devices. I've seen a lot of folks reporting these, and I'm going to show you the deterministic model guidance right now, and essentially you could toss it right out the window. All of our models are currently struggling with this effect that's going to take place between Rena and Philippe, at least for the next 36 hours, give or take, before we finally see them detach or uncouple from each other and begin to do their own thing and go back to a return to form if you will, in terms of what our projected outlook is for these systems as they go through time. All in all, we will see a bit of a reprieve in both their forward progress. They should stay close together for the next day or two before they finally warp out and start to move in their own general path, whether it be off to the west-northwest or due north with our upcoming next frontal system and trough off the United States coastline. I do anticipate they will try to both lift to the north, maybe not in simultaneous fashion, but more or less sequential fashion. Rena will eject out and kind of be slingshot shot around Philippe's influence up to the north and eventually he'll be drawn in as well as our next polar system comes off the coastline and works its way into interior Atlantic Ocean. Today that is not entirely what I want to emphasize. Yes we are returning to the Caribbean Sea but I have a lot of good information to present to you guys and a lot of concrete evidence to support what it is we've been talking about for the last few days. So we're going to cannonball right in because I definitely want to take my time and lay it all out to you in a way that you can understand that doesn't seem like a kerfuffled mess of all sorts of different fancy words and jargon. So here we are. This is 12Z of our good old Canadian model. And as we go through time, we are still seeing that same general trend that we're going to get a low spinning up well over into the Eastern Pacific, cross the Central American landmass, there's our buzzword again, and move into the Western Caribbean where it will try to organize into a full-fledged tropical system. Yesterday and during the day today, we are starting to notice this trend where the low pressure center wants to eject over the Yucatan in rapid fashion before re-emerging over the Bay of Campeche, the southern Gulf of Mexico and then finally really undergoing some good deepening and strengthening. You can see the precip field not only associated with this frontal system coming off the United States, but also just the tropical energy with this potential future system. Yesterday, in the last couple of days, I thought that the Canadian model was trying to highlight its own individual system, and maybe that's why none of our other deterministic operational models were highlighting any development. But I think I've put the breadcrumbs together 
and I have a better picture to explain to you guys for the day to day. So now if you watch closely, what we are dealing with here is actually poor model resolution. As we all know, the Canadian, the GFS, the Euro, the Icon, they're all lower resolution models because they see across the globe. They see in large regions across the planet. And as a result, we can't be very high res, such as the likes of the high resolution rapid refresh model, the HRRR, or the NAM 3 kilometer. When you hear numbers like that, 12 kilometer, 30 kilometer, 3 kilometer, etc., what we're we're talking are the computerized grid boxes that the model can interpolate data for us. That's why it's a lot better to use the likes of the NAM Nest, the 3 kilometer, the 4 kilometer models, and the high resolution rapid refresh for areas like forecasting for a city or your local neighborhood or where we're likely to see more of our severe localized thunderstorm activity take place over land. The resolution of our tropical models is much larger. They have much larger grid boxes, so sometimes they struggle with areas of lower pressure. And what I I do think is happening as you go through time you see that low stamp right about here you have a thousand three millibar low getting ready to move into Nicaragua Costa Rica watch as I click forward one panel you still see it making landfall and then you go forward in time and suddenly it essentially teleports to the Caribbean Sea if you go forward in time one more step you can see the model erases that low stamp and then if you continue through the loop and you pay close attention to where that stamp is it jumps all over the place across different parts of interior Central America the Caribbean Caribbean, and then back even over the Eastern Pacific. Utilizing what I recall from doing my synoptic analysis during my time in Air Force weather, we do have things such as resolution errors with these models, especially our larger scale models. Far too often do we see localized areas of low stamps, high stamps, because the model's struggling to determine where our lowest central pressure is. And what I truly believe, this is just my theory, is happening with the Canadian model, is it's trying to highlight an area of low pressure, but but because we are underneath the Central American gyre again, we also have good upward vertical motion increasing the amount of lowering pressures we have at the surface level over a large span of area. So what I think is actually happening here is the model has no choice but to interpret that maybe there's a tropical cyclone trying to form and as a result it's stamping our low and moving it like an organized system but really it's trying to pinpoint where the development is going to take place where we're seeing the lowest central pressures and now we can go to the icon and the GFS to show us where that development might be. So watch this timestamp. This is the 8th of October at 12Z. We're now on to the 12Z GFS, and I'm going to go very quickly through time. This is 150 hours all the way through to 240 hours. Now, the GFS is a little bit more hesitant to form something up, but if you look out over the Bay of Campeche, you can see that there is an organized cluster of precipitation interpreted by the model, as well as a closed isobar of 1014. As you go through the loop past where the Canadian model can see, take a look at what the GFS decides to do. It starts to deepen what looks to be our next tropical system over the western Gulf of Mexico and then hike it off to the east with our next approaching trough and frontal system. The icon doesn't go as far out and we're a little more zoomed out from this perspective as well. But if you pay close attention off the Pacific coast of Central America, you start to see a low deepen and try to push inland right over the same general area that the Canadian model has bullseyed for the last several days. So from one model and a bunch of ensembles, we've gone to three different models and a bunch of ensembles because the GFS ensembles paint a very similar picture with two different source regions. The Canadian ensembles are still singing the same tune with the same general source regions. So as I mentioned in my last few video segments, we're slowly but surely starting to see that evidence compound on one another. So now we have a few more model platforms and a little bit more model data to go off of and compare side by side and overlay over each other to see what sort of consistency we have now and what we could possibly see over the next three to four days. What I'm really paying attention to now, since we have more deterministic models highlighting a chance for development, is if that development stays on the charts. I'm not looking for a source region. I'm not looking for a landfall. I'm not looking for intensity. I'm not looking for any of those variables just yet. What I'm continuing to investigate now, since we have more models, the GFS and the ICON, is if we continue to see formation predicted by multiple model platforms, the GFS, the ICON, and especially if the Canadian continues to progress this system system through time, forming it at about the same time frame and really starting to deepen down around the good old Friday the 13th mark, that's when confidence can really start to increase exponentially that we do have something on our hands potentially in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Western Caribbean. That's still a toss up. Just like we mentioned with Adalia, we saw hints that it could be in the Western Caribbean or the Western Gulf.
So once again, we're seeing that split difference. But the thing that I'm trying to get at today, guys, is we're starting to see more agreement. Albeit we have one run from two different models, but for the same time, for the same general location, for the same general intensity. So we're starting to see things line up together and the evidence is only starting to grow. What we're going to look at now are the Euro and the GFS ensembles. The 12Z Euro has not fully come in yet, so we're going to use 0Z, but the 0Z helps to elude on a little bit of the same patterns we've been seeing with the Canadian and the GFS. As you go towards the back end of the latest or I should say the previous run of the Euro ensembles you start to see a lot more in the way of lowering pressures over the Gulf off the Central American coastline in the East Pacific and then eventually towards Friday the 13th we start to see some ensemble members picking up some potential development in those same two source regions highlighted now by Climate Prediction Center and what the other model platforms have been hinting towards the last few days so again breadcrumbs baby steps guys but the evidence is slowly starting to compound and layer upon itself we started off with just a few ensembles that grew into a few more ensembles and then we started with the canadian operational now we're going gfs and canadian and a little bit of the icon as well and maybe even the euro as we get down the road a little bit we might start to see a trend there or we might not slowly but surely we're taking baby steps through this i'm deciphering it and investigating every day that comes to be every new model run we get every different atmospheric parameter I'm digesting and obsessing over all of it. I can promise you that because if something decides to kick off where it is, especially with a trough and another frontal system coming off the United States across the Gulf of Mexico, if we do see cyclogenesis, this is going to get picked up and it's going to move fast. We're not going to have a whole lot of time to prepare for it. It might not have a lot of time to organize either, so it's going to be a pro and con game if we do see something form. I'm not laying it out there and I'm not 100% confident we will, but confidence is growing. That is the key takeaway from this segment of Weather Center. Here's a quick look at the GFS ensembles. These are the 12Z ensembles, and as you get past 120 hours, you can see that Central American gyre starting to lower pressures across Central America into parts of the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean. And as you go further in time, past the same time frame as the Canadian ensembles and the operational run, the main run have been predicting, there goes our cyclogenesis on either side of the Yucatan Peninsula, one tracking it up towards the Cayman Islands and through Cuba into the Bahamas, and another trying to undergo deepening in the Gulf of Mexico and inevitably push towards Florida with every single ensemble member. Not a whole lot of agreement, not a whole lot of consensus, both operational and ensemble, but again, confidence is slowly growing. We're seeing incremental increases of about 2 to 5% as we go day to day. And that's the reason I want to continue to emphasize this because no one has really started to talk about it yet. We had Idalia and it started off with the same patterns with the same trends. One model followed by two, followed by three, and the next thing you know, we had a major hurricane in the panhandle of Florida. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. If you'd like, please take a look at that YouTube short I uploaded discussing the Fujiwara effect. If you'd like a full upload relating to that material, please let me know in the comments section because I do have about a four-minute segment explaining all the incidentals of what Fujiwara really is so you guys can better understand it whenever we use that type of terminology. And if you'd like, please refer to the live stream I broke into earlier this afternoon. It should be on my page as well if you want a bit more information of the things that I dug into this afternoon to come to this bit of a theory. But that's all it is right now, everybody. It's a theory. I'm noticing some trends and they're not looking too good. There's no sense in concern or stress or hype just yet. But again, you can't argue with the data and we already have Climate Prediction Center also on board with that same general source region being a favorable environment. So it goes without saying, we're still in that same holding pattern. We're still watching and we're waiting. And I want to make sure that regardless of if this takes shape or if this forecast is a whole bust, at least someone is communicating that there is a potential so you at least know to watch. And that's the name of the game with weather, with meteorology. It's a matter of letting you guys know what the possibilities are like and what to potentially expect as we go over the next five to seven and maybe even the next 14 days into October. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow night is going to be our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk. If anything further develops between now now and then we will break live again i hope to see you in the chat there we always have a great time very casual forum we like to talk tropics talk informal conversation or just have a good time good energy good vibes i'll also see you tomorrow at the same time same place for our full segment of weather center nazario after this one today we may have more to talk about we may not enjoy the rest of your thursday ladies and gentlemen this is weather center nazario signing out